Good morning. Today's November 4th, 2024. Another commentary. I think each day is a commentary now. In Jerusalem for Feast of Tabernacle, it has been six months since the last Passover, which Jesus evidently did not attend because of threats on his life. However, as the time arrives for the annual Feast of Tabernacles, held for eight days in late September and early October, apparently Jesus feels that he can once again journey safely to Jerusalem. The Feast of Tabernacles, one of three national festivals, along with Passover and Pentecost, which all males are obliged to attend, is a ser uh, commemoration of the ancient wilderness journey during which the Israelites had li lived in tents. Accordingly, during the festival of the people, and according, accordingly, during the festival, the people live in, impro in improvised booths made of tree branches. For this reason, the feast is also known as the Festival of Booths. More anciently, the feast was referred to as the Feast of the Harvest, or the Feast of the Ingathering, since it was celebrated after the vintage and harvest were gathered. Though some of Jesus' brothers will later become leaders in the church, apparently at this point they cannot bring themselves to believe that their brother is the Messiah. Almost tauntingly, it seems, they urge him to go up to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast. Jesus puts them off, however, perhaps realizing that their intentions for him are not sincere. For his own reasons, he prefers to go up quietly, and therefore tells them that he is not yet ready to go. Jesus will follow them after they have gone, but only after some delay. When Jesus finally arrives in Jerusalem, he will spend his time teaching and confronting the religious leaders who have assembled. It is a time of mixed feelings among the Jews. Some are busy trying to have Jesus arrested, while others are convinced by his teaching and miraculous works that he is the Messiah. Imagine having Jesus as your brother. Okay, the Messiah, the Son of God. Okay, all right, so we're in John uh, 7, two, uh, verse 2. It looks like we're mainly in John for this. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. When, but when, G, when the Jewish, Jewish Feast of Tabernacles was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, You ought to leave here and go to Judea so that your disciples may see the miracles you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world, for even his own brothers did not believe in him. Therefore Jesus told them, The right time for me has not yet come. For you, any time is, for you, any time is right. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that what is what it does is evil. You go to the feast. I am not going up to the feast because for me the right time has not yet come. Having said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the feast, he also he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Now at the feast of the Jews, now at the feast, the Jews were watching for him and asked, Where is that man? Among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him. Some said, he is a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the Jews. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having studied? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own does not he who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. But he who does he who speaks on his own 
does so to gain honor for himself, but he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet not one of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon-possessed, the crowd answered. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus said to them, I did one miracle, and you are all astonished. Yet, be, but, yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses, but from the patriarchs, you circumcise a child on the Sabbath. Now, if a child can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing the whole man on the Sabbath? Stop judging me by mere appearances and make a right judgment. At that point, some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, Isn't this the man they are trying to kill? Here he is, speaking publicly, and they are not saying a word to him. Have the authorities really concluded that he is the Christ? But we know where this man is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus, still teaching in the temple courts, cried out, Yes, you know me and you know where I am from. I am not here on my own, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him, but I know him, because I am from him, and he sent me. At this they tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his time had not yet come. Still many in the crowd put their faith in him. They said, When the Christ comes, will he do more miraculous signs than this man? The Pharisees heard the crowd whispering such things about him. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple guards to arrest him. Jesus said, I am with you for only a short time, and then I go to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live scat scattered among the Greeks? and teach the Greeks? What did he mean when he said, You will look for me, but you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. On the last day, on the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is the prophet. Others said, He is the Christ. Still others asked, How can the Christ come from Galilee? Does not the scripture say that the Christ will come from David's family and from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, Why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke the way this man does, the guards declared. You mean he has deceived you also? The Pharisees retorted, Has any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed in him? No, but this mob that knows nothing of the law, there is a curse on them. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus earlier and who was one of their own number, asked, Does our law condemn anyone without first hearing him to find out what he is doing? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Look into it and you will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. Then each went to his own home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery, they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. 
in the law moses commanded us to stone such a such women now what do you say they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him but jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger when they kept on questioning him they straightened up and said to them if any one of you if any one of you is without sin let him be the first to throw a stone at her again he stooped down and wrote on the ground at this those who heard began to go away one at a time the older ones first until jesus was left with the woman still standing there jesus straightened up and asked her woman where are they has no one condemned you no one sir she said then neither do i condemn you jesus declared go now and leave your life of sin i just wanted to point out back here in parentheses like as a side note it said the earliest manuscripts and many other ancient witnesses do not have john 7 53 through 8 11 which is interesting um, which is the woman caught in adultery. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.